Welcome to Thoroughbred Times on the Scene. We're back here at Belmont Park. We're joined by a special guest, Dr. Greg Barroza. Dr. Barroza is not only a licensed veterinarian here at Belmont Park and in New York, but he's also a veterinary writer for us at Thoroughbred Times. We're very you know, pleased to have him as a guest. I think uh, Dr. Barroza is going to offer some unique insight, talking about this year's Triple Crown, of course, Doc, you, your history in racing goes back. You just mentioned that you, you go back to 1971, walking hots with for Johnny Campo. A couple of years after that, 1973, of course, Secretariat won the Triple Crown. There had been a 25-year drought uh, prior to Secretariat winning the Triple Crown, so much anticipated. Not unlike this year, if you could talk a little bit about 1973, maybe your own personal recollections of it, you, and you had a, a, a direct involvement as well. Yeah, I always knew since I was a kid driving by Belmont Park I wanted to work here one day. And in 71 I got a unique opportunity working for Johnny Campo. That led to me being introduced to a fellow named Dr. Mark Gerard, who unfortunately just passed away a couple months ago. But he was a phenomenal vet and secretary. It was one of the many horses. We took care of all of the Lucian Lauren horses at that time as well as a host of others. Unique time and we have the same feel here today. I really think this horse has a significant shot. It's not just hype, but I think he's the real deal. And I did my own interview with Doug O'Neill a few days ago, and I said to him that there were a lot of press critics back in 73 that said Secretariat couldn't go two races in a row, couldn't keep up with these fractions because each race was faster than the next, couldn't then go the distance, didn't have the breeding, didn't have the confirmation he had a duck's ass, I'll never forget that. And you know what? Each race got better and better. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this Belmont Stakes is the best race for I'll have another. So you mentioned, uh, it's, it sounds like if, if I were to put you on the spot right now and have you make a pick, you would definitely be all in on I'll have another. Uh, so you do think he's going to get the job done and maybe we're going to see something special out here on Saturday? I'm hopeful. In fact, uh, yesterday a t-shirt arrived right from California. My cousin works for the owner. And, it, and I have an I'll have another t-shirt. Now I'm rooting for a clean race, I'm rooting for a good race, and I'm rooting for the best horse to win. I just hope I'll have another as the best horse that day, but you know what? If he can't beat Dullahan, Union Rags, or any of the others, that's the way horse racing is. But if he can beat him, I think Dale Romans would be the first man to tell you this horse deserves to be the Triple Crown winner. Now Doc, you mentioned uh, some controversy surrounding Secretariat, or at least maybe not controversy, but some doubters, some critics. Obviously racing is, is going through a period like that now, not unlike it hasn't in the, in the last several years. Obviously Lasix and, and the whole Salix issue is a, is a big issue in the industry right now. Uh, you know, tell me your thoughts on the whole Salix issue. I mean, maybe we could fill up uh, hours of, uh, of time talking about that issue, but uh, you're a veterinarian, so you have an interesting, and a racetrack practicing veterinarian, so you, you kind of bring a unique perspective. I mean, what are your thoughts on the whole issue and the, the debate over race day medication? Well, let's just stick with Lasix or Salix for now instead of the whole debate on racetrack medication, or we could have a symposium here and no one would want to watch for hours. But having said that, I'm, I'm definitely of the purest uh, slant. And I was here back it, it, when Belmont had no Lasix or Salix, and it was available to any other track in the country. A lot of potential Triple Crown hopefuls that won the first two legs of the race, the Derby and the Preakness, came here and lost. And the trainers and owners said it's because we couldn't race with the Lasix, which, which we'd been using. There was a big effort to accept it. And it's interesting, with Lasix, let's put in perspective, 34 years later, we still don't have a Triple Crown winner. So I don't know that it made that much of a difference. I think there's a level playing field. I would say as a purist, as a veterinarian, either they should all be eligible to use it or all not use it. And the trainers will come up with whatever methods they had before Lasix to give the best performance for the horse. We have many trainers that feel that this is going to be very important for the safety of the horses to minimize bleeding. But there's also an equal number of trainers that say that if I don't have it, I'll do what I have to to keep my horse sound and we'll go from there. So there's a lot of political implications. I don't want to go there as a veterinarian. My concerns for the health of the horse, I think they could race without it. And if everyone says they should have it, then it should be available to everyone. Simple as that. Now you mentioned uh, what is available and what isn't available. Another interesting angle to this year's Triple Crown is uh, I'll have another wears a, a nasal strip, a flare nasal strip. He was allowed to wear it in California. He was allowed to wear it in the Kentucky Derby, allowed to wear it in the Preakness Stakes. New York uh, regulations require him to not be able to wear it, even though uh, they are allowed in standard bread racing. They're not allowed in, in thoroughbred racing. Uh, 
talk about a nasal strip and maybe what the benefits are to using them and maybe the reasons why they are not allowed to be to be used in New York. Well, tr to try and be short about a very large subject, the horse's heart is an important part for pumping blood, but their uh, lung capacity, uh, their larynx for breathing, and their nose, their nostrils for getting the air in. That's like the carburetor in your car, getting all that air in is an important factor. The nasal strip premise is that you can open up the breathing passages in the airways just so slightly ever better than without them. Now, how much of a factor, if you ask the company that sells them, it's a tremendous factor. If you ask the critics who don't use them or tried them and they didn't work, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not sure that this horse will have any better or worse performance without them, to be quite frank. A good racehorse is a good racehorse. Having said that, many of the people are worried more about the gamblers and worried about the end performance and if the horse loses will they say it's because they didn't have them if it rains will the nasal strip fall off and then it will affect the gambling odds if they were to allow nasal strips which I personally have no problem with it's not a drug it's not a medication if they were to allow them and they allowed every other horse to use them I would have no problem with that but I don't run the racetrack so there is a slight advantage with having it perhaps and for that reason, the powers that be decided we're not going to make it an issue here. We're not going to let the horse use them. Having said that, if this horse wins, I think those people that were critics should give the horse all the glory that he is entitled to because he did it yet again without this help. Well, certainly a, a, a charged issue, you know, and a lot of, a lot of racing fans, and, and you, you read the blogs and the posts, a lot of people have an opinion about it. Another thing that people have an opinion about is the New York State Racing and Wagering, Wagering Board's decision a few days ago to implement some rules for the Belmont Stakes, specifically the, the implementation of a stakes barn. Horses, all horses in the Belmont Stakes are required to enter that stakes barn. They were required to be there by noon yesterday. They all did that. They've all been in there. They got uh, pre uh, out of competition uh, testing done. They sent the results to the, to the lab that they use. All the horses have, you know, are, are coming out of that barn to train. They did that this morning here on Thursday. They're going to do it again tomorrow, obviously go out of it on Saturday to race. Uh, the horsemen have been griping a little bit about it, you know, whether they, they gripe on the record or off the record. Uh, talk about the decision to that, uh, how that affects the horses. You're obviously somebody that's around horses a lot. I heard some people say today that maybe the horses won't relax as much as they normally would have in a, in a quieter barn. Does it make any difference? You know, they're all, you mentioned level playing field earlier. They're all on the same rules. They all have to be in the detention barn. You know, is it going to make that much of a difference? It might make a difference in some horses. And each horse has its own style and personality. In fact, we could discuss volumes about how do you train a horse. And each one is different. You speak to the great trainers, they'll tell you, you got to know your horse. Some horses will perform well with a bullet workout, and some horses just need the time and they need to reserve their energy. Having said that, I like the concept of a level playing field. I'm not here to win a popularity contest. You're asking me a veterinary question and a health management, I'm going to answer it. And I think that if all the horses are in that barn, it's an equal playing field. And I think the establishment, the administration for doing that should be applauded. And whether or not it's the best thing, I've heard people say, well, why can't they just have a security guard outside my barn? And that's true, they could. But how about the horse at stables here at Belmont all year long, and then the outsider has to come in and be under unique scrutiny and in a unique environment? So I see nothing wrong with it. Is it a bit of a pain for the trainers to have a horse in another barn? It is. Now, we have to protect the integrity of this sport. This sport is under tremendous controversy, and I think the media is trying to make bigger issues out of things that really aren't issues, and that's a problem. So the New York Racing Association made this decision. I think it's a smart decision, and I think what it does is protect the betting public and protect everyone in the game to say, there's nothing that's going on outside the rules here. You can make all the arguments and complaints you want. All the horses are together in this barn. I applaud that, and I think it's a good deal. Might it affect a few horses? It might, and this is just part of the the dilemma of racing a horse, picking uh, three races that are first two weeks apart and then three weeks apart, different parts of the country, different distances, and now they're going to have to meet a detention barn, but they're all going to be in the same barn. Well, certainly a lot of issues to discuss. We appreciate you taking the time to discuss them with us and, and looking forward to Saturday's Belmont Stakes. I know you have some special plans yourself for, for Saturday coming out here to the races. Uh, what does your day entail? And, just give me another summary of what you think is going to happen right out here on Big Sandy, mile and a half, on Saturday's Belmont Stakes. Well, if, if I could take some personal time to first say, 
I, I have my own website, uh, L.I. Horsestock YouTube, and I did some nice interviews with people. If, you, if your viewers would like to see a couple personal upfront interviews with some of these trainers in a more relaxed pre-game interview, that would be a good spot. But having said that, the reason I say this is because there's a gut feeling. And I asked an important question about Dale Romans, Billy Turner, and Alan Jerkins. And I said, you guys train based on statistics, numbers, breeding, distance, but then you have a gut feeling. The great trainers have that feeling. What do you think? And every one of them said, this horse is the real deal and has a shot. Now, I'm hopeful that he wins on Saturday. I, it was 34 years ago I got to see Secretariat win here, and I had a personal interest in that. And that probably was one of the biggest impetuses that made me want to be a veterinarian when I saw that happening. So now, on Saturday, I'm bringing my son, who's 15 years old, and I want him to share that experience with me. And, and I just, it's a personal note, and I think there's a reason our... Today's world is so complicated and we are having some financial issues. It's the same era as Secretariat. There was financial problems. Secretariat ended up on the cover of Sports Illustrated multiple times because he won. I'm just hoping we have the real deal here. The detention barn proves that the horse is a solid deal based upon his own physical talent. The trainer's been amazing and being cooperative with everything that's going on. The press has been attacking him. They've been criticizing the horse. And I'll tell you what, I've heard interviews with Dale Romans and I've heard interviews with the... Um, other owners of other horses, uh, Bob Baffert's owner, that uh, is coming coming forward to try to take, uh, that came with Bodie Meister two shots and now is coming forward again. And every one of them has said, if this horse wins, he deserves our credit. I'm just hoping he's a super horse we've been waiting for 34 years. That's my hope. Well, we will find out on Saturday if I'll have another is indeed a super horse and will join the pantheon of great Triple Crown winners.